Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another 1320 Garages. Matt and I have flown across the pond to England for a very diverse and very massive car collection. We're here with basically what I would say is the closest you can find to a British Cletus McFarland. Let's check this collection out. Hi, I'm Mark McCann, pro UTV racer and YouTuber, and welcome to sunny England and my compound full of weird and wonderful cars. understand this property is massive. We've got several garages. Tell us what we're going to see today. Yeah, there's, um, it's on a 17 acre, so it was a derelict farm, beautiful location, really, really lucky to have. Got garages scattered everywhere just because of what we have to do in the UK. We haven't got lots of space, but yeah, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Fingers crossed. There's three or four garages. Yeah, there's going to be four sort of shops, okay. uh, which we go into, and then there's lots of cars which are too good to be outside but have to be outside because we haven't got the space. How many it. cars? I'd say 50, 60. <laughs> it goes up and down as they die and go to the scrapyard. But um, right. yeah, I'm not quite sure. Not only that, you have two test tracks in the back as well. Yeah, there's um, a UTV track um, and then uh, a track which we use for our YouTube channel just to do silly things really, I suppose, stupid, Perfect. immature. Let's start off with the cars. Let's do a quick run through these. And then after we go through all of the 50 or 60 cars briefly, I want to know your top three and we'll take some of those cars out. Brilliant, thank you. First up, uh, M3 E46 Coupe, manual edition. So it's quite rare for us. There's not many of these which haven't been molested to be fair. So uh, trouble is we've been doing a video this week, so it's a little bit worse wear at the minute, but one of the best driving cars I've ever used. Amazing car to drive. So these recent editions actually, Mitsubishi Delicias, bit of a weird vehicle. Um, I'm really into off-roading, uh, I like jumping cars. Um, so in my head, this was gonna be a car which you can use everywhere. Great seven-seater, yeah, a bit odd. Don't really see them in the UK. I've imported them both over from Japan. Um, yeah, I think a bit of a quiet taste, but you can go through a river, a lake. It's got a snorkel on there, so exactly. it's pretty serious off-roading. So you can, uh, yeah, go places you shouldn't, which yeah. is always good in a minivan. That's my friend's car, A45 AMG Merc. Now these are, are quite a special car around here because they're, they're quite fast and they make a lot of pops and bangs, real great car. That's a special one, it's a yellow night edition, so quite rare, beautiful interior like really real big fan of that car. Great daily drive and still fast and pops. That's the Beautiful most important car. thing. Um, Clio, uh, Renault Clio RS18. Again, very rare car, only 15 in the UK. Uh, again, a special edition, wider arches, spoiler. Um, but again, a lot of the stuff which I have, I buy because they're investments. So I try not to lose too much money. So a lot of the stuff here is rare and obscure. So hopefully, unique. Yeah, so hopefully the money stops good, which yeah. is uh, obviously in this day and age, it's good to sort of have money in here rather than in a painting or a watch or a, uh, sure. at the bank. This is one of my latest cars. Um, just, just amazing. I'm a huge fan of Lamborghinis. This is like their latest model, uh, the Urus Performante. And again, oh, the carbon fiber. I had this car, I've got a really good relationship with Lamborghini and I got the first car into the UK, but it was a forced spec. So I couldn't tick any boxes. A man oh, in, really? Yeah, it was a man, already pre-configured. Oh, a matey in, a, you know, in Italy, he loved his mouse because there was every, it's got massage seats, double glazing, got stuff you'd never yeah. use, but I wanted the first car. But again, the good thing about this sort of thing in the UK at the minute, the residual value of these is massive. Like I could sell this now for probably a hundred thousand dollars over Damn. what I pay for it. It's. Um, I don't think I've seen a Performante before. Yeah, they're really, really rare, and um, yeah, the, the, the Euros market in particular and Lamborghini, they're so, so strong at the minute. Um, it's a great place to have an amazing car and it not cost you any money, which is just crazy. Now this car, we're going to have to do a cold start because this is a, a Brabus 850. GLE, so 850 horsepower, twin turbo. Damn. This thing is mad. Like a family SUV. Yeah. Uh, I bought this um, from Slovakia, so I imported it from over there. It took a long time to get here. Left hand drive, unfortunately, but um, a great car. The noise this car makes is just second mm -hmm. to none. <laughs> Let's 
So we got the first of several garages here. Yeah. About that, how big is this one? Um, three cars, that's all I can okay. tell you. <laughs> yeah. Looks like about 7,800 square feet. Now these, these, these are weird. I think was probably the best thing we can say. Very weird. We got three weird vehicles in here. Yeah, so this in the UK, anybody who's sort of like 35 plus will know what this is. It was a Sinclair C5. So you pedal it and it's battery assisted. Does it charge as you're pedaling it? Yeah, um, it does. And it's a really, really sort of, it was gonna be the big thing which never took off. Um, so they're very, very collectible now. Now these things, I don't really know why I bought them. My friend told me they were for sale and I'm, I'm sure <laughs> they're gonna be amazing, but I haven't quite figured out what to do yet. But I think as a, as a, for our YouTube channel, I think this could be a great day because this does, it says it on one of them. Okay, so it's got the world record, half a gallon Birmingham to London, but to give you an idea what that measurement is, average fuel consumption, 608 miles per gallon. Really? Yep. About the same as the Brabus. And it took him about three days to do <laughs> yeah. that, I'm guessing? I'd imagine it was downhill, but yeah. Um, the, the, I don't really know what they are, but I just feel that yeah. when I got the opportunity to it's buy- It's a Mark 1 mouse, apparently. Yeah. Is that what they're called? I think they are called a mouse. It's got a picture of a mouse on the front. It's one of those cars where when I get offered stuff, people seem to tag me and stuff, which is weird and wonderful. And I feel like if I'd have missed it, I'd have never got the opportunity again. It's one of the weirdest vehicles I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and, and you have two of them. Yeah, so to get in. So one's a convertible and one's a hard top, looks like. Yeah. And that's where you get. Whoa. Look how tiny the engine is. So it's a little diesel engine. Yeah. Which apparently does 600 miles per gallon. <laughs> oh, we've got one vehicle we can't skip over here. Oh, uh, yeah. This gives me goosebumps. This is cool. So, um, yeah, my daughter's called Senna. Um, and this is um, Ayrton Senna's probably most famous Formula One car this is based on. Obviously it's cartoon-ified, so it's gone a bit smaller and a bit fatter. Yeah. But yeah, my, my friend Brett's just finished this. Um, yeah, it's a pretty sweet. amazing. So is it made out of like AstroTurf? So he's made it out of wood and then um, wire mesh and then he's covered it all in AstroTurf, but yeah, like, you know, the detail of it is absolutely amazing. Should we go inside? Sure. We can get to this later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice, some of the side sides. Yeah, so these are my Irish ones. A few few people with fastest laps as Cody's. There was, yeah. It was more about showmanship rather than speed. He had no respect for the corners or anything. He was um, he was absolutely flat out, good fun. So the, yeah, these are the race, uh, the race cars, RS ones, fully customized, not for speed, but, but for strength. So we're trying to get them to last as long as they can. Yeah, both these are both single seaters. Uh, I always used to race motocross, um, always, and then I, I broke femurs, back, neck. When I got to that stage where I used to race on a Sunday and it would be the Wednesday or Thursday before I could get to go up the stairs without crawling up, oh I decided enough, enough was enough. So then I found these and everything's good apart from like the impacts because I don't like to go, I like to jump far. So that's the only thing which lets me down now is my back. But um, yeah, I have to have a really, really good seat, good suspension. And yeah, they're a great transition from an old man with age comes a cage. Mm, yeah. I've never heard that before like that. Ooh, yeah. I've seen that you've had this car. Yeah, this is a special, special, special. Before yeah. we get to the cars, real quick. Yeah. Tell me about the shop. This is the third one we've seen. Yeah, so this was this was actually um, the, the old building, which we um, recladded and put some more um, stanchions up. So this was actually a hay barn back in the day. So they used to, the farm used to, it had no sides on it, so it was just a big roof. Um, and then we converted it um, uh, to, yeah, store some, store some cars in. All right, let's get right to it. We gotta see Ken's old car. Yeah. This is amazing. So I bought this about a year ago, obviously way before his tragic accident. Um, obviously it meant I bought it, I paid too much money for it. The reason being is because I'm a huge Ken Block fan for no other reason whatsoever. Um, my friend said that it was too expensive. I bought it and my God, I'm glad I did. Obviously yeah. with what happened and like, this is the car, you know, this is, is. the car. So um, this has been in the Gymkhana's, um, it's done a World Rally Championship, it's done Global Rally Cross, it's done everything. It's been, it's the one which is on fire, it's the one which did Dubai. 
and the chief engineer only lives 15 miles away from here, which is a stroker lock. How did that work out? Did you know that when you bought the car? I had no idea. It came over, it came over from them. They were happy that I bought it because they'd yeah. seen what we did. So they were happy that we actually that it came to my hands rather because they didn't really want to see it go into a museum. Um, and then uh, I couldn't get it to start. Put some Instagram posts out, and then the guy reached out and said, "Like you need to speak to Derek, Derek Dauncey." And if you look at Derek Dauncey, he is the man which designed and built this car. But um, he said that he was amazed out of all the cars he owned. He thought this was the one which he'd keep forever. Um, and obviously, what's happened now? Like, what do we do with it now? It's real difficult. So. Goodwood wanted, everyone wants to borrow it, obviously, and yeah. the Goodwood Festival Speed, maybe it go to there this year, because I think Leah, Leah might be going as well, so maybe she even gets to sit in it and drive it, I don't know, I don't know the plans yet. But And you still drive it too? Yeah, yeah, definitely still still drive it, um, want to drive it, I want to, it's real difficult again, because I can't go to Goodwood Festival Speed and do donuts. Yeah what's the point like it's already been done better by oh, this legend I, yeah of so but w interestingly he never raced it up the hill and he didn't race it up the hill because he's a man who's won a lot of things mm -hmm. and that car is not built for hill climbing so if he did go up the hill fast it wouldn't do very well and ken block never wanted to finish 70th place yep so right. maybe we go up there as fast as it will go that'd be cool yeah which will still be 70th place yeah or worse yeah so this car from the jim Carner was actually on fire so you can see still all the battle scars under there, which is, oh yeah. I think that only adds to it. I like a carver story. Yeah, so this is um, a world rallycross car. Um, this was driven by Timmy Hansen, who has since become world champion. I think this is 2014, I think, Peugeot 208. This is actually faster than that. So this is, um, this is a crazy car. An absolute crazy car. So, yeah, very, very simple car, nothing to it, just extremely, very extremely fast. Strong cage. So this is a bit of, this is the sort of, um, the more classic -y, older, smaller, again, back to that hot hatch era, um, Clio V6. Now, these cars are, if you've got a collection in, the, in Europe, it's like a, a cool car to have in the collection. Rear engine car, and it's really high. A terrible turn in circle. Everybody says, oh, I've got to have one of these, but everyone's forgot just how bad they were. Do you That's the weight in the back? Oh, just terrible. But what a, like, it looks immense. Yeah, but the wide fenders. Yeah, just a, this very is cool look to it. Yeah, this was one of the, probably the last times car manufacturers spent a lot of money making a ridiculous car before everyone went sensible and worried about money. Um, so this was back in like the proper crazy days. Yeah. Yeah, very cool car. Similar, but just like probably a, a scale down a little bit, a Renault 5 GT Turbo and a Peugeot 205 GTI. Now, this was a well-known fact in the 90s. If you had one of these, you had a pretty girlfriend. That's how it worked. <laughs> <laughs> and the faster you could drive, the prettier she got. <laughs> and I like the seats. Yeah, the proper retro. Right the but these two cars, it was like a like Ford versus Ferrari type mm -hmm. thing going on. The Peugeot and the Renault. If these two were seen in the same building, you'd have been stoned to death. Like there was, you either loved that one, hated that one, all the other way around. It was a there was a big rivalry. Cool car to have though, and they've only done about 50, 60,000 miles, so they're quite. Okay. Everything here is sort of like collectors' cars. Back yeah, here. it's all with the mindset of hopefully not losing money. Mm, I bet you don't know what that is. Uh, no. I see the badge on the front, but is it actually an Aston Martin? Yeah, so this was an Aston Martin Signet, very, very rare car. With our rules, at some stage somebody decided that the emissions had to be an average. So some of the big supercar manufacturers had to buy low emission cars, badge them, register them to try and get their average down, which sounds crazy. They got around that by eventually having to pay a forfeit, but this was one of the the, the births of that. So this is an actual Aston Martin car with a beautiful interior, but it's a Toyota Ago. Um, this a Smart 125R, so 125 of these ever made. It's basically a smart car, which Brabus then tickled. Um, cool interior, there, there's 124 of them, which are soft tops. And this is the only one in the world which they ever did as a hard top version. So this is, yeah, the only one. The one of one? One of one. Really? Yeah, so this is the only one ever hard top. It was one of those I bought at auctions, similar to the auction you saw the other day. Mm -hmm. um, 
and yeah, I bought it over the phone, bought it, and then sometimes you get this stuff back and think, why did I do that? But it's, uh, it's an asset. In an interest for time, we cut out about 25 miscellaneous cars from Mark's collection, a pack of Mini Coopers he rallied with his friends, an actual functioning tank parked in the middle of one of his racetracks in his backyard, a Mini he was trying to drive across water, a dozen go-karts, a police car, and a ridiculously loud Mercedes converted into a truck. <laughs> Oh, I, my ears definitely ring on that one. I am extremely lucky to have what I've got. And um, yeah, in here is stuff I've dreamt about and always looked in posters and saw cars. And somehow I've managed to acquire a few. Should we? The Ferrari. Yes. <laughs> so again, a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we went to a, a car meet and it was Italian cars only. So I thought the Honda NSX was going to be Italian for the day, so it's a Feronda. Um, and then everyone said I was going to get a cease and desist letter. <laughs> so I thought, when I do, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll get a F40 and stick a Honda badge on it, send them a picture, <laughs> and then we're all square. <laughs> so I'm waiting for that letter. I, I actually think... did the same thing with my car. I would, I already R8, I snuck into a Honda show, so I put Honda badges all Brilliant. over. Brilliant. Yeah. You ready? Yep. It's by remote. Right. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, the STO. I had a Performante before, a Hurricane Performante, and then I got wind that this was coming out, so I sold my Performante, not knowing a lot about the car, only seeing some pictures. I didn't realize it was rear-wheel drive, so I should have probably kept the Perf, but this thing is the sketchiest car I've ever driven really? in my life. Like on the dirt, this What, thing. you drove this on your track in the yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, this is, <laughs> it's a rally car, as you can see from the ridge. Um, but yeah, it's dangerous, because it's just got so much power and no grip. Yeah. It's, um, I've, I've seen the whole twin turbo thing, and I know that you've done it. It looks yeah. amazing, but it is. I've never been brave enough to spend the money yet. Um, so that is similar to the Ken Block car. So Ken's car originally was an M Sport Fiesta, made up in Scotland. That is an M Sport R5 Fiesta, so that's sort of like a similar car, um, but this is sequential box, um, hydraulic handbrake. It's literally a rally car for my back garden, and it is That'd be so much fun. So much fun. It's it's so fast. It's got some Benzes back here, a pair of yeah, a pair of black series. Yeah, so this is two black series, two seater and a four seater option. This one's only got three thousand miles on the clock. Wow. So this super one's low miles. super so. So they've both got the aero kit as well, which is really important. Mm -hmm. um, this one's got a crack room. Got one of these at Shamiz as well. Yeah, Shamiz has got a, a white one, hasn't he? Uh, I think, yes, white. Yeah. yeah, he's got a white one. So Audi's uh, short wheel bases, recreation of the of the amazing square box Lego cars. Like they are unbelievable. Such a beautiful car. Such a unique look. Like they they are worth. That's a recreation. It's not an original S1, but they are worth millions, millions as a as a, as an original. That's just you can't tell. It's got loads of original parts on it, but obviously it's not an original car. So Group B, just a so basically what Group B was in our World Rally Championship, you had to you couldn't just make a bespoke car. You had to have sold a production car, and the production number was 200. So all the manufacturers made a bespoke car, but made 200 of them. So to, to totally, gotcha. totally just get around the rules. Yeah. Sold 170 or whatever to the public, and then raced the other 30. So that's how they got around the rules, and that's what made a Group B 200 limited edition car, which now in the UK and Europe they are worth an absolute fortune. The the price just keeps going up and up and up because they, they change, change hands so rarely. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them don't even go to market, it's all behind closed doors. Yeah, this was this was all done in 50th, 40th anniversary. All right. Okay. I saw the first one of these four days ago <laughs> and there's two sitting here. Yeah. And Matt's so a big fan of these. Matt, did you see, it's got two RS2000s? I've seen three of these now in total and all of them are within this week. <laughs> So both uh, Ford RS200, um, a road version and a rally version. Ah, yes. So this, uh, again, the Group B cars, 200 of each. Both of the um, light pods make them really, really nice. 
This is perfect condition. Um, this is a converted road car. So it's not, if this is an original Group B car, probably worth two million pounds. Wow. Um, so this is probably worth about 300,000 as, a, as a, a converted road car. Mm -hmm. This is worth very, very similar money. But these things sound immense. You got one left. Yeah, and she's a special one. So it's called a Mercedes CLK DTM. They only ever made 100 of these. Um, so super, super rare carbon fiber like you would not believe like every, even underneath the carpet in the boot is carbon fiber yeah it's it's a very under not underrated unknown unknown mm -hmm. car i've never seen one for sure see the, the, the red are very very unique they, they're they're quite ugly it's quite an ugly looking car <laughs> Mercedes uh, makes a lot of ugly cars like even the wheels are ugly you know but it's it's the wide body looks beautiful very special but if you have a look inside, I don't know if you'll be yeah. able to come past them. I'll let you hold them. So, like, there is your cruise control. <laughs> what? Is this a switch? Is this a switch? On or off? Yeah, be behind where you look, like your, 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 your arms are. Yeah. So, totally useless. Uh, before we hop in the car, I'll just show you in the house. There's a couple of things you might like. All right. So, oh, no way. Yeah. Shmi had something a lot like this. I see. So, this is, yeah, this is pretty much. I'm trying to collect all the cars I've ever owned. Um, so, and there's, there's a couple of cars here which I, I don't own, but I aspire to own. That was my first ever one. Ah, transit van. Four transit nice. van. And then we went Fiesta and yeah, there's some, and obviously a lot of these, there's some cars here which aren't here today, which you're gonna miss, but one of them mm. is that. Yeah. So that's a Gallardo GT3 car. Um, you own that now, or? Yeah, I own that now, oh, yeah. So, okay, so that's another one's missing. Yes, yeah, so that's missing. Oh, the, I'm sorry, I didn't recognize it, so. I, yeah. It is an older Lambo, let me see. Yeah. Okay. Holy cow, yeah. Yes, that's a. I had uh, never seen a GT3 version of the car. Yeah, GT3 Glado, so okay. it's crazy car. Because it's not like a Super Trofeo. Yeah. This is like a purpose-built race car. It well, sounds it person. mental, <laughs> yeah. Um, Lotus and Mira. Oh, you have one of these too? Yeah, that's not here at the minute though. It's music um, on, I think it was yellow maybe. Yeah, I think he has got a yellow. That's Such it. a cool car from the front. That's, that, mine's the blue color. Um, and then the Aventador SVJ, which <laughs> that's that one, which isn't here. Yeah. So what number would that car be if it were here? That would, without doubt, be number one. Is it? Okay. So I'm gonna spoil that unfortunately, but yeah, like that to me is, what I love driving. Uh, it's just amazing car. Yeah, so unfortunately, really sorry we didn't get to see that today. Want to experience it. Though, yeah, you? enough time. We've come, got a replacement for it. If the ones I haven't got, which I want, is I would love a Lancia Delta S4. So that car I haven't got, but I've got the model. And then this car, a Metro 6R4. So gr both group, group B rally cars, mm -hmm. 200 ever made. But those, but they've just gone so much money that it's just, it's one of those where if you had a, um, a crystal ball, you'd have been sorted, but those, obviously. Is that from racing from your childhood? Is that, yeah, like that the, so the Group B rally yeah. cars are definite, but I've missed the boat, you know, they're, yeah. they're just way too much money now. And it, I think as well, what makes it worse is once you've known how much they were, you don't <laughs> want to spend that money now because you think if I'd have done that, but I keep on doing that and they keep going up and yeah. up and up and up and up. Um, right, we'll go upstairs. Whoa, no yeah. way. So this is... Um, <laughs> that is the most serious racing simulator ever. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Yes, yeah, so it's motion. It's made by a company in London. And it just it's just such an amazing tool. If you've, When you're racing like I do, if you've not been to a track, yeah. go on this and it definitely makes a difference. It's a huge advantage. We're gonna go RX. See the car? Ken Block car. That car is literally here. How weird is that? Oh, perfect start, yeah. cheeky start. Ooh. Holy shit. <laughs> well, I could race in here all day on the simulator, but we gotta go hop in some cars and see what your number three is. Perfect. So I'm gonna go fetch number three and I will be right back. Definitely sounds exotic. Ah, yes. Yes, yes. 
I've actually never ridden in one of these. This should be a treat. <laughs> I love it. It had to be a Lambo. I've never actually been in STO, so oh, this really? will be perfect. Yeah, this is, um, the, yeah. Oh, like you the, spray painted the side of it? Yeah, that, <laughs> that was ready for gumball. <laughs> I assume it's, okay, yeah, it's wrapped. All right, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me too much about it. We're gonna hop oh, in okay. here and Brilliant. hear why this is your number three. Okay, perfect. The reason, I, this is such a great car because it's a normal aspirated engine. Yeah. Like it makes such a difference. Like it's, um, if we go into uh, sport mode. By the way, <laughs> the roads here are ridiculous. <laughs> this is like a, this is basically an American single lane right here. Yeah, we haven't got a lot of room here. So on the way here, I met a few cars and I was like, I guess I pull over. Yep, <laughs> there's, a, there's an unwritten rule that whoever's nearest the nearest gap has got to stop before you. Yeah. comes with the, the V10, right? The V10, yeah. So, and it comes with a double clutch as well, which is really important. So, it doesn't feel as aggressive as the SVJ, which I like, but it's the, the gear changes are so, so fast. Yeah. By the way, my ears are still ringing from the MLK. Oh, yeah. Yes. Here we go. Gotta hear this a little bit. Should we do a launch start? Sure, why not? <laughs> and everywhere here has these berms on each side of the road. Yeah, so it vibrates more, doesn't it's it? It's amazing. Yeah. Back home, you only get it with tunnels. Tunnel, yeah, find ridges, a tunnel. But here, it's everywhere. All the roads are surrounded. Right, now we have a problem. Now, this is the, the UK. The Lambo has the right of way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, she was very kind of us then. That was nice. So what's your favorite thing about this car? Is it the sound? Um, the looks. The looks? Yeah, the looks. Like, I've, I've, I'm lucky enough to have better sound in cars, but the looks of this car. Yeah, the roof scoop oh, the roof is scoop. my favorite part. I, and I like those, the lines on the back uh, arches. Yeah, it's, Shmi actually said he didn't prefer the roof scoop. I was like, ah, that's the best part about yeah, this car. This, so it makes the STO look. Totally, totally. Yeah, all the different carbon all over is nuts too. You can see the fenders out the side. Yeah. What's one thing you would change about this car if you could? Um, this. Like when you go over some bumps, you'll feel. When we go over a bumpy road, your foot. Yep. Like oh, go, it uh, modulates Because it, it's so responsive that you you sort of can't stop it. You can feel it now. I see. It like um yeah. So bumpy road because we've got bumpy <laughs> roads. So sometimes we go down a bumpy road and you're like your revs are going like that. There's, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. We're gonna go back and show me your number two. No problem. What the hell? Right. <laughs> okay. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> what in the hell? Uh, what is this? I told you it was a cool car. Yeah. It's so weird to drive, but it messes with your mind to watch it. It's backwards. What the hell? <laughs> Showing off. Showing off my reversing speeds. All right, I gotta hop in. This isn't number two, but he said he was gonna keep this as a surprise. See, that's the thing. Inside, it's fairly normal. Yeah. It's only from the outside it looks crazy. <laughs> when you get to go in it, you can't figure out which way you're supposed to go. Which side, you can't figure out your head now, which yeah. side the steering wheel is. Oh, yeah. Crack. 
I need to build one of these. You should. Hey, you got two R8s. That's true. We can make six of these. Maybe, maybe ten of them for that. Or you could have really one badass backwards R8. <laughs> All right, so this is number two. Yep. The Black Series. This is a 6.3 liter V8. It's a C63, but it's actually a 6.2 liter. Oh. So on the on the side of the car, it says 6.3. Yeah. But it's actually a 6.2 liter. Interesting. Yeah, very, very odd. So yeah, V8, normal aspirated, a fantastic bark on this car, fantastic bark. So what is it that you like about this car to make it your number two? Um, I feel that the way it sounds is one, rear wheel drive, so it's extremely sketchy. Yeah. A uh, lot of fun, uh, especially on wet days. <laughs> and I also feel that this car is timeless with its shape. So the new C63, I don't think, it's, from my opinion, is not as nice as this one. I feel that they've just got the squareness, the edges, the aero pack, just a great, great car to use and is still like extremely lively. We're taking this around the track because they yeah. haven't updated on it and they're very strict on the roads, right? Yeah, so um, we'll try not to remove this front splitter. It's like, it's like so good. ice skating. Yeah. It just beautifully, beautifully, beautifully just slides along. Look like completely different sound than the Lambo. Yeah, I think that's the. I think that's what made these the the '63 such an amazing car. Like it's not waspy. It's very grunty, very mm -hmm. very angry wasp type sound. It's a yeah. It's a distinctive sound. The C63, I think. <laughs> so is this all factory? This car? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a standard four-seater with aero kit in black. So yeah, it's it's a super super rare car. Um I can't imagine there's many in the world with 3,000 miles on the clock either. No. Uh -uh. What's your number one favorite thing about this car? Um I'd say just about looks just about because the engine noise and the sort of the way it performs is amazing but I just feel like um, it's the right balance of angriness and sort of sophistication it looks cool it's not too over the top like a Lambo mm, factory know. with some flair the yeah. wire fenders the and arrow I, and I feel like in the UK this car is unknown as well. So the people who know what it is go, oh my God, yeah. oh, again, Alice, one of them. But yeah. a lot of people just go, they don't understand what it is. Like a black series is, you know, if you know, you know, like mm -hmm. this is a special, special car. It's a lot of uh, dust in my teeth. Take this back and see what number one is. Yeah, okay. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I might be the only passenger to ever ride in this car. <laughs> there could only be one winner. This is what I was hoping for. Yeah, it's um, it's the people's choice as well, isn't it? And it's yeah. it's just a special car that it's got to be my all-time favourite in the collection at the minute. It's just stunning, just an absolute dream to even sit in, never mind drive. 
I have goosebumps again. I love it. You got a pastor seat for me. Yeah, it's a, it's our it's our dead dog's bed. <laughs> you didn't have to tell me that. You didn't die on it. Oh, okay, good. It's, it's, it's good. That's good. That's good. And it, and to be fair, it's not been used recently, so Perfect. it's probably probably ideal. All right, let's go for a ride. Yeah, there's no key. Oh, there's no key at all. <laughs> Nothing at all. How do you start it? Um, just by pressing the button. So you can't take it shopping. It can't be a daily driver because you cannot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zero key. That's it's... definitely a first. All right, <laughs> let's start it up and hear this thing. So what we have to do, it's all this Cosworth power pack. Yeah. And we have to just build up um, oil, oil temp first. So, so it's this Cosworth power pack, but we have to build up our oil pressure first. Gotcha. So we'll... Turn the engine over, but without putting any spark in. We gotta prime it. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, mate, what makes this your number one? I think because. I bought it for to have the ultimate race car. And I think this really is that because it does everything. It you like durable cars, right? It'll jump. It'll faster than a Formula One car. It just does everything. Uh, a rally car, rally cross car. And that's what I've been to is jumping cars. <laughs> Since we can't very easily talk in the car, let me ask you the questions I ask about the other cars. What's your favorite thing about it? Um, I think the amount of stuff this car's done. Um, what Ken did with it is obviously mind-blowing and it's been viewed by billions of people I'd have thought. Um, just the, the sort of different variety of things this has done is sort of like for me, the top part of the car. Is there something you would change about it? Um, that would be wrong, wouldn't it? Yeah, it <laughs> I'd would. be stoned to death. There's a reason that you bought it. Yeah. It's for that reason. Um, yeah, no. Um, I just, I'd love it to be a daily driver. Yeah. If I could do that, <laughs> if that was the one thing I'd change. No way to legalize it here in um, England. We're going to try. Uh, we are going to try, but what we don't want to do is anything we do is not to sort of change the integrity of the car. So there's stuff like, obviously, they're not real lights, yeah. uh, but they only clip in and out, so we can put real, uh, re new lights in, um, change a few things, but obviously it's so loud. So it might be a, a tall order to do that, but yeah, daily driving, it would be pretty special. Yeah, for sure. What a special car. Yeah, you're so, so lucky. So lucky to, look to have this, and I feel that, um, I, I feel that with this car, when we've asked our audience, should we put it, look at that, this is crazy. Yeah. Should we, should we put this in sort of like museum or should we drive it? And from Ken's family, they've said that it wants to be driven. 
Good. So I they love want it to be that. used. They want it to be sort of like enjoyed. And that's why with our channel, I want people to be able to experience the car still because obviously Ken was unfortunately gone, but the car is very much still here. And I think it's time that sort of the world gets to see it and appreciate what an amazing thing because this stuck in my garage is just not 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 where it should be it should be enjoying itself stretching its legs so we've seen the whole collection we've seen the compound the last question we ask is what's next what's missing in the garage um i'd really like a metro 6r4 for definite that's definitely one which i, I metro want metro 6r4 R4. yeah okay. mg metro 6r4 it's a, an old rally car which i'd really like and um, i've got a, a storato on its way so that's oh, a Lamborghini. The rally? Yeah, the, the, the Hurricane. But I feel that we already do that anyway. So I feel like it's cheating. Because yeah. we do it with the STO and the Performante and the SVJ. So um, I don't know, not sure what else I get out of that. But um, yeah, um, I think for now, I don't feel like I strive towards a Bugatti or a Chiron or like I know they're absolutely mind blowing cars, but I prefer stuff which I can really not abuse, but use to its full. And I feel like something like too technical and too precious would be yeah. wasted. So I like you drive to, your cars. I you drive them really hard. Functional. Yeah, I need it to be a little bit so that it doesn't do sixty thousand pounds worth of splitter damage on the first day out. And I wanted to bring my cars up here to this amazing place and enjoy them. So I suppose for me, something with a bit of ground clearance and obviously rally carish and jumping. Jumping's a big thing. I like what I like to do. So yeah. Well, thank you very much again for, thank you for inviting coming. us out here and showing us your whole compound, the garages, the amazing car collection. It was just something special to see. Every every garage we visit is something unique to the owner. Yeah. And it's really cool to see what your collection's all about. Now, I appreciate the opportunity and thank you for coming. Cheers. That's it for this edition of 1320 Garages. We've had a blast hanging out here with Mark in England and all the other places we've been. We've got a lot of videos to show you guys from England already have on our channel, so hit that subscribe button for even more. If you guys know of a garage we should check out, email us at garages at 1320video.com. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.